Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 5, which is hydrocarbon, focusing on the subtopic of 5.1 alkene part 4 of this video. So in this video, we're going to explain the halogenation reaction of alkenes, and we're also going to look into the mono substitution of alkene containing equivalent and non-equivalent type of hydrogen atom. And last but not least, we're going to explain the free radical mono substitution mechanism of alkene. Halogenation here means that we're going to insert halogen group or atom, for example, chlorine or bromine into the alkene. So the alkene will be converted into haloalkene. Alright? And we're going to look that for the mechanism and also the situation for mono substitution. So without any further ado, let us start. So the halogenation of free radical substitution uh, will be uh, happening when the alkene is reacted with halogen, for example, chlorine or bromine, in order to produce haloalkene. And this happens when the pres with the presence of light or UV, where the temperature is greater than 100 degrees Celsius. So let's say if we have an alkene here, and this is reacted with halogen, under light, which is HV here, or UV, or light, one of the H here will be converted, will be replaced with X, and H will be replaced, the X here will be changed into H. Okay, so they're going to swap the places. So, with methane, the reaction produces a mixture of halomethanes and hydrogen halide. So, let's look into the example. For example, if we have a methane reacting with chlorine gas, so under the application of UV, one of the hydrogen here, which is CH4, it will become CH3 because one hydrogen here is replaced with chlorine. Okay, so one of them, it will become CH3Cl, and Cl here will be replaced with hydrogen. All right. And the same situation for this case, we, we have the propane. So one of the hydrogen okay, will be replaced with chlorine. So it's going to be CH3, CH2Cl, and Cl here will be replaced with hydrogen, so HCl. It is compulsory to include UV. Without UV, your reaction is going to be wrong. So you have to emphasize the UV. Okay. Same situation for this uh, compound here, where the carbon is attached, is a quaternary carbon, and it is attached with the metal group. So one of the hydrogen will be replaced with chlorine under the application of UV. And let's say if we select this hydrogen, one of the hydrogen is changed into chlorine. Okay, so you can pick any one because it's still the same. All right, so now, we're going to look into the free radical substitution and we're going to focus on the reaction mechanism. Mechanism means that it is a reaction that happens step by step. So we have to follow the sequence. So let's say we have methane reacting with chlorine. It will become CH3Cl okay, and HCl. So this happens under UV. So, the steps that include interaction mechanisms are the initiation step, the propagation step, and the termination step. So, the most important one is the propagation step because this is where the major product is being formed. Okay, now let us look into the step one, which is the initiation step. So, during the initiation step, light or heat that's indicated by the UV here will provide energy needed for the homolytic bond cleavage to occur. So, when the homolytic bond cleavage is happening, the free radical will be formed. Hence, when the reaction, uh, this is where the starting point of the reaction mechanism because radicals are very, very reactive. Okay, so we can start with our chlorine here. So, you can write chlorine as chlorine, chlorine single bond or with the two electrons here. So, um, when it is applied under UV, this will undergo homolytic cleavage where one of the electron 
will be passes into chlorine and another electron will pass to another uh, chlorine atom. And this is represented by a half-headed arrow because a half-headed arrow refers to one electron. Okay, so uh, due to this, it will produce chlorine-free radical. Alright, now the, the chlorine-free radical that is being generated from part 1 will be the reactant for step 2. So one radical will generate a formation of another radical. So in this case, the chlorine will react with the methane, which is our reactant also. So it will break the bond of CH here, where one involved in the reaction and another one is passes into the uh, chlorine, uh, to the carbon. So we will have the HCl and the methyl radical. Okay, at the same time, the methyl radical that is produced from step 2 number 1 just now can be reacted with the chlorine gas which is ClCl here or can be represented here so this dot will be connect will will induce uh, the combination with the Cl chlorine and one of the electron will be passed to the chlorine atom and this will form CH3Cl, which is our metal chloride, and this will produce the chlorine radical. So our metal chloride here is the product that we wanted to form, and that is why the propagation step is important. In the previous slide, okay, uh, step two number one, we have produces HCl, which is part of our product. In step 2, number 2, we produce a CH3Cl, which is also our product. Now, we go into step 3, where we have to terminate. Kita kena stopkan production of the radical. So, uh, we have CH3 radical. So, they, both of the radical are very reactive. So, they will combine together in order to form product. So, CH3 and Cl can be formed to form in or can be reacted to produce CH3Cl and CH3 and CH3 can be reacted to form CH3CH3 through a single bond here and CLCl can be also combined to form chlorine gas okay so remember it need to be a half headed arrow and it the the arrow need to be very close together all right and this is our product once again and this is our byproduct not the product that we wanted and the chlorine here will be our reactant it will be produced and it will be used up again to start up the chemical reaction once again all right so there are three steps initiation propagation and termination so okay these are the informations that um, you just need to know so just now we look into the CH4 right so basically CH4 here is the strongest CH bond however we can also repeat the experiment using a tertiary CH bond so basically tertiary CH bond here is the weakest CH bond so when the weaker CH the weaker the CH bond it is more readily more readily the hydrogen to be replaced in the radical halogenation so the weaker the bond it is easier to undergo a halogenation which is the free radical substitution just now okay and just now we're using the ch4 which is the strongest bond it is still happening if we use the sherry um uh, the tertiary CH bond here, it will be much much easier because it is the weakest bond and this is because it will allow the generation of tertiary free radical which is very very uh, much stable than the metal radical as what you have learned in chapter 4. Alright, now 
Let us look into another example to reinforce your understanding. So, for example, number one, bromination reaction is used to prepare uh, to prepare bromocyclopentane from cyclopentane. Provide the reaction mechanism where it is conducted under UV. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is you need to be able to draw the structure. You need to, call, you need to know how to write the equation first. So, you need to start from cyclopentane and then you need to produce bromocyclopentane. So, cyclopentane is to be something like this. And then, it will be reacted with bromine, I guess, under UV in order to produce bromocyclopentane. Okay, bromocyclopentane. And this will also produce the HBr. Okay, so this is our major product. Product orang utama. So, lepas dah tahu equation ini, then we can construct or do our reaction mechanism. So, for step number one, it is the initiation step. Yang mana, the bromine just now, uh, the UV will provide energy in order to break the bond via the homolytic cleavage. Okay, sorry. The arrow here need to be up to the atom. And here needs to be up to the atom. So, we need to include light. And then this will produce Br, red, Br dot radical and bromine radical. Okay, so bromine free radical. Now for step 2, which is the propagation, the bromine radical that has been produced will be used up in here. So we have our cyclopentane as the reactant and here we'll be attaching with hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen and hydrogen so all the carbon will be attaching with hydrogen so one of the hydrogen so we can select any point will be replaced with bromine okay one hydrogen here will be replaced with bromine which is here so in the propagation step the br dot will be uh, connected with h uh, H from the cyclopentane and one of the electron is placed into the cyclopentane at this point and this will produce the cyclopentane radical and HPR which is one of our product. At the same time, the cyclopentane radical that we have produced will then react with the bromine gas, okay, where this and this will be connected together, one of the, the radical will be connected together, and this will produce another bromine radical. So, the Br will be connected together in order to produce the bromocyclopentane and the bromine radical. So, this is our product, which is looking at here, and HBr here is also our product. So the propagation step is very very important and this will have the generation of another radical. So this is our product. Now in the next step we need to terminate the radical. Okay, so termination we have to stop. So we have to connect the radical together. So we have Br and Br. So we can combine them together to form a uh, bromine gas and then the cyclopentane radical will be combining with the Br radical in order to produce um, the bromocyclopentane which is one of our product as well. And at the same time, the cyclopentane radical can react with each other in order to form two cyclo together all right so this is where the generation of the free radical is being stopped and we will get to our uh, product once again all right now we're going to do example number two which is a much simpler approach where how many haloalkane can be obtained from the monochlorination so mono maksudnya satu 
chlorination of CH3, CH23, CH3. So the first thing first, we have to expand the structure so that you can look it, at it easier. So when it is, uh, this is known as pentane because it have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon atom and this is known as pentane. And then when it is reacted with chlorine under UV, okay, HV or UV or light, one of the hydrogen can be selected to be received, to be replaced with the chlorine. So we can change one of the hydrogen here with chlorine and this will produce one chloropentane. Or we can select the hydrogen here. So one of the hydrogen here, which is H up and H down, will be replaced into with chlorine. So this is going to produce two chloropentane. At the same time, you can also select the hydrogen from carbon number 3. So one of the hydrogen here will be replaced with chlorine and this will produce 3 chloropentane. Okay. You can also select here, but HCl. Okay. But then this one going to be the same as this one, but just in the different uh, direction. This one is on the right and that one is on the left. However, if you swap it, it's still the same. So basically, we will only have three haloalkane, which is three possible product for the monochlorination. So mono maksudnya satu. So kita pada setiap situasi, we only change one hydrogen with chlorine at one time. Alright? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.